up guys, we are going to give end to this block RE3 of our reactor engineering course. We're done studying rate loss and it's the stoichiometry. So this was section 1 and this is section 2. Rate loss are important to solve our problems since our design equations need them. So every, every design equation, CSTR, PFR, patch, all need rate of reactions. All are based on this. So if you don't have data, you can apply rate loss and maybe you can get them. Now you know that you don't need experimental data. You could also suppose a rate of law and apply it. Of course, it needs to be suitable to that reaction. So once with the rate law, it's easy to size the reactor because with the rate law, with this rate law, you get all the rate of reaction values for conversions. Now, do you know how to calculate the order of reaction? Simply, order of reaction. You know what it is and how to calculate it. Besides, you also know how to apply the elementary rate law, which is very important, actually. And you understand the importance of this, this constant, k, the constant in the rate law, which is uh, supported by the Arrhenius equation. Uh, we've seen also Arrhenius equation with the terms it has, we have the, pre, the frequency factor, activation energy, temperature, the ideal gas constant, etc. And we jump to the mathematics, given that our rate of reaction are based only on one reactant, let's say A, and we know we base everything on conversion of A and flow of A and concentration of A. We based all the other uh, species, let's say B, C, D, inert, in terms of that reactant A. So that's why stoichiometry comes very handy here. And probably you are bored of all the equations I just did, but you will use them in the next chapter. And when I use them, I don't want you to be explaining you everything every time we get them. So I did this special section for you. You now know there is a difference between the liquid phase and a gas phase because of the volumetric and or constant volume. So you know that hopefully you always get liquid phases because these ones are easier to model than those of gas phase. Worst case scenario, to have a change of moles in a gaseous reaction. Your reaction changes in moles, so you got one mole and it transforms into two moles. Well, you gotta model that in the most like, complete, complete form. Isothermal, isobaric is supposed in this chapter. So, of course, guys, I was telling you all the time, isothermal, please, temperature 1 equals temperature 2, and isobaric because you have no pressure drops. You want to actually see what happens when you have isobaric effects, or not isobaric effects, for example, you got a pressure drop of I don't know, 10 bars, go to chapter 4. If you want to check out isothermal design, go to chapter 8. You will find there some information. It's actually so cool, but if you're doing this step by step, please don't jump the next block, which is reactor engineering block 4, and keep doing because you're doing great. You're here by far, congratulations, because you are now able to go to chapter 4 for isothermal reactor design. So finally, you are going to do reactors. Not only size them, you can also calculate flows, flow rates, volumes, rate of reactions, etc. So if you need more information, please don't hesitate to go to my webpage here or to my fan page and, or even contact me by mail. So thank you guys. We've seen these books, especially this one here chapter number three. I recommend you to go here, check out the book. It explains uh, very, very good. I really like it. So check it out. See you in the next block. What's up guys? It's me, chemical engineering guy. So if you like the video, why not push the like button? It really helps me to know if you're liking the videos or if I should be changing something or I should be adding something, taking out content, whatever. Also, sharing is caring. 
So if you got any kind of friends, teachers, colleagues, or whatever kind of person that might be interested in this type of content, why not share it? Sharing helps our community to grow faster in members and in content. If you want to keep track of my activity, videos, uploads, experiments, playlists, whatever content I'm getting on YouTube, be sure to click the subscribe button. Subscribing to the channel is totally free, guys. My dream is to create an online academy of chemical engineering, where everyone can access it in the world. Imagine a place in which the student, the teacher, and the engineer get the best of each other. Thank you, thank you, thank you guys for the support and the love.